In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a retrofitting of a crown. Now we come across cases in aeronautics where we need to do some kind of post core because the tooth has been badly destructed. So the entire intention of our post is to hold the entire core in the place. Now uh, there have been instances where uh, once the post core has been done and a measurement or an impression for a, uh, for a prosthetic crown is, is taken. Uh, and when the prosthetic crown comes from the lab, uh, they, the patient now turns out with a broken core. Okay, so maybe even if the post core has not been done, still the tooth crown or the core breaks. And now we wonder what exactly should be done. So this is a technique which is called as a retrofitting of a crown. So what do we exactly mean by retrofitting is that we need to go backwards in case to fit the same prosthetic crown that has been fabricated from the lab. Yes, it is definitely possible. So let's jump on now to our presentation. Before starting the presentation, I hope you have subscribed to my channel and don't forget to click the bell icon. Now this procedure of retrofitting is not new. Literature has shown us few different techniques that have been used in the past like uh, something called as a Teflon pattern resin or thermoplastic material has been used for retrofitting of the new prefabricated crown. Now uh, this entire concept of retrofitting is basically that uh, we need to build the uh, internal core of the tooth according to the new prefabricated crown. Now whenever we are doing this there is a small risk that the uh, crown might get accidentally adhered to the new core material or the second core material that we would be doing. So the entire intention here of using different techniques is to create some kind of separating medium so that once the internal core has been fabricated we are able to remove the prosthetic crown and then we can lute the same crown separately. Now uh, in few articles or, or the articles in the past they have uh, used some uh, teflon or pattern resin or maybe some kind of thermoplastic material but uh, what i found that these uh, materials are a bit technique sensitive uh, so the easiest separating medium that you can use in my experience is the petroleum jelly so yes this petroleum jelly is the best material that you can use as a separating medium so that the uh, new prefabricated prosthetic crown does not adhere to the core. Now to understand this technique more in detail let's see a clinical case. Now this case was referred to us because the core the tooth core uh, of the patient broke off and the dentist mentioned that she already has has a zirconia crown which has been fabricated so uh, is there any kind of technique with which we can still use the zirconia crown and and we can make our core of the tooth so this is the zirconia crown that was uh, that was fabricated from the lab now a very important element that determines success of this procedure is rubber dam isolation yes rubber dam isolation plays a very critical key because we when it comes to bonding we need that uh, perfect isolation so that the new core that we would be doing uh, bonds well to the underlying tooth structure now regarding the rubber dam isolation we already have a online rubber dam course uh, the link of which uh, is there uh, on the top of your screen you can definitely check out the details later now once I have made a anterior quadrant isolation with 212 clamp on the uh, left central incisor before starting anything I am doing a fit check of the prosthetic crown because I don't want that my clamp should interfere with the fitting of the crown once I have, once I have placed the core material inside the tooth. Now after caries has been removed and the surrounding structures have been cleaned well, the next step is to do a post and core. Okay. Now any post has a specific length. Now, our, now suppose if I am not cutting the post and I am directly luting it, there is a possibility that the post might interfere with the crown placement. Therefore you need to cut the post 
before you start with your postum core therefore uh, as as per the length of the crown approximately the post has been cut now once the post has been cut the next step is to etch etch uh, now when it comes to etching it is necessary that we actively scrub the etchant because you want those uh, perfect resin tags to form once the etchant has been washed the, the next step is to bond well and to apply adhesive well now once the uh, once the etching and the bonding step is completed the next step that comes is preparation of the prosthetic crown that we have now we need to have some kind of separating medium uh, so that the core does not get adhered to the prosthetic crown therefore as i mentioned petroleum jelly is the best separating medium that you can use for this purpose so uh, this is uh, this is coating of the vaseline or the petroleum jelly on the intaglio surface of the crown so the internal surface i have applied petroleum jelly all over one thing to note here is that it should it should not be too much in excess it should only be a thin coat that has to be circumferentially or applied all over the surface now once this step is completed i am injecting my core material uh, inside the root canal and i am looting the post not only that i am injecting some amount of core material inside this prosthetic crown and once this is done i am seating the crown in place now this core material which is there it is a dual cure core material okay it is necessary that i use a dual cure core material because before i am removing the crown i want the entire core material to turn hard so once the crown has been fitted i am waiting for 3 to 4 minutes for the chemical curing to happen adjunct as an adjunct i am using light cure also but in cases inside or or in areas where inside the root canal where the light cannot reach uh, it is necessary that i use a dual cure material so that the material hardens itself chemically now once the material has been set with the help of any plastic filling instrument or maybe any uh, sickle scaler i am lifting the prosthetic crown okay once the crown has been lifted all the excess flash is removed and i have this internal core ready which was as per the original core that was done before the prosthetic crown is fabricated once the uh, internal core has been fabricated it is necessary that we do some kind of finishing and polishing not uh, it is necessary that we do not too much aggressively because the margins correspond to the prosthetic crown and this is how the final tooth looks so as you can see here uh, the internal core has been fabricated and it is going to fit exactly uh, according to the intaglio surface of the prosthetic crown and this is a two year follow up of the same case so the uh, entire uh, so the zirconia crown was saved the tooth was saved and eventually the things became more predictable now taking this presentation a bit ahead and to give you a small variation of this technique is uh, i would say are cases where patients come to us with a dislodged crown now uh, the patients do mention us that the that they have no issues with the crown person okay they have no food lodgement uh, the crown is uh, perfectly well fitting since many years more than more than 10 years they are able to chew etc and maybe few of the patients are not are also not affording to make a new crown so they always ask us that whether can we retain the old crown as it is now this was a similar case where a patient report uh, reported to our cleaning with a dislodged crown this patient was non affording and he uh, mentioned to me that whether i could save the uh, old crown and still do a retreatment and a core build up so on the on the same note this uh, the this was the old crown so we send the old crown to the lab to get a sand blasting done to remove whatever luting cement what that is there on the intaglio surface now once uh, the crown was ready a quadrant isolation was done and a secondary clamp was used on the tooth number 
six that is the first molar now as you can clearly see there is a lot of secondary decay and in case if i am not removing this decay then there is a possibility of of retreatment or the, the root canal getting failed at a later date therefore my intention is to clean the caries and then do a new core material now in case if we are only removing the caries and looting the entire crown only with my glass isomer cement the entire retention of the of my new of the crown is lost it is necessary that we do build up the internal core of the tooth so once the isolation has been done uh, i am doing a fit check of the metal crown whether the crown is fitting perfectly whether the clamps and the rubber band is not interfering with my crown placement now once everything is checked and uh, and uh, we are good to go the next step is to is caries removal so all the secondary decay that was there with the old core has been removed uh, now etchant has been placed in the cavity and uh, and the tooth was actively scrubbed with a micro brush once the etchant has been washed the next step is adhesive application now once the adhesive has been applied and it is it is light cured the next step is preparation of our crown so for the preparation of the crown i am applying the separating medium that is our petroleum jelly on the entangled surface and i am placing my dual cure core material inside the old crown now the same core material is also being filled up inside the tooth cavity and once this is done the metal crown is now seated over the tooth and then is the time to wait for 3 to 4 minutes for the core material to set completely now as you, as you can note here this is a metal crown so there is no possibility that light is going to pass through the metal metal crown and cure the core material inside so it is mandatory that for such cases you always use a dual cure core material now once this is done the crown the metal crown is removed whatever excess flash is removed and now we have our new tooth core ready which is completely caries free so we go ahead now and then we fit a fit the same old crown with glass anoma cement so this is how we save the patient from uh, from the extra monetary steps of make of fabricating a new crown so friends this technique is definitely predictable it works if it is done in a proper way and rubber dam isolation plays a very important element for predictability of such kind of techniques i hope you have liked this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that tomorrow when i make such videos you will receive a notification see you again